Hi, I'm Megan O'Neill, Head of Design for Venmo, and I'm so glad you're joining me here today at Config 2022 for my session, Fig Jam and Retrospectives, like peanut butter and jelly. Let's jump into it. So a quick note about retros, whether you do them individually, as a team, or as an organization, or if you do them just within design or with your cross-functional partners, they take many different forms. Retros are meant to be a time to come together for feedback, reflection, and improving your processes, and even bonding together. So no matter how you do them, you can find some practical advice on how to apply them today. But first, how did I get here to speak to you today? So in 2011, I joined PayPal as a junior contract designer, pretty much the most entry-level position that you can get within design at PayPal. And over the past 10 and a half years, I've worked my way to now be the head of design for Venmo, also a company owned by PayPal. And throughout this journey, I've had many different roles from individual contributor to design leadership, either participating, facilitating, or implementing changes. And sometimes just within design or also working with my engineering partners, product, and also leadership. And what I found is there's no one way of doing retrospectives. But I'm excited to share with everyone here today what I learned throughout all these different perspectives. So let's unpack how Fig Jam and Retros work so well together. So today I'll be starting out with three practical pieces of advice and a fictional example of a team retro example in Fig Jam. So first, we will chat about why starting early with your team will set you up for success. Next, we'll then discuss how using a framework will provide structure and gather feedback and input. And finally, I'll share several tips on making retros more actionable. This is the secret sauce that I think most people want. <laughs> so kicking it off with why is starting early so important. It's essential to start early and to be intentional about timing and boundaries. So what does early look like? So oftentimes, teams will remember to do a retro at the end of a sprint or after a project is launched. And you can start even earlier than that. The benefit is that people can be taking notes during the process or can, um, connecting with other people to remember their feedback and things they want to improve upon. So it's not all just flustered at the end of like, I think we had some feedback, but I can't exactly remember what it was. So um, first thing you can do is set up a Fig Jam board way ahead of time. And if you do them often or with other teams, you can create a reusable template. And Fig Jam makes that so easy for just managing logistics. This predictable format makes it familiar for everyone. And you can also tailor it towards your team's culture. You might find that your team feels more comfortable expressing itself through memes. So you can give them ahead of time like enough opportunity to collect like feedback, not only feedback, but also if there's like funny like memes or pictures or even like YouTube videos or things like that you can link out to. So, and more importantly with why starting early is so important is to set boundaries and expectations and guidelines ahead of time. So this way your team knows the who, what, when, why, and how of like why we're doing this. In this particular example I'm hearing, sharing here in Fig Jam, you'll see a section about like how will this information be used? Um, what are the related timelines or how can I seek assistance? It's really, really key for everyone to be on the same page of like who has access to this information? What type of stuff I'm, am I gonna be anticipated on sharing? Um, so people feel more comfortable. Um, I was actually talking with Miggy about this and he shared that when he had done this with his team, they had actually done a survey ahead of time to judge everyone's level of comfort. And so that was one of the things that sets that boundary of like, if people are gonna also say, I'm not comfortable, you might wanna provide another option. There's been times where we've provided an opportunity for people to share in a form anonymously, or just also jump in ahead of time, just to judge everyone's level of comfort. So the so what of this is the goal in starting early is to be as open and honest and as inclusive as possible. Without being inclusive, you risk that lack of representation, which then limits discovering issues that you can resolve together. And really, isn't that the point? Like making sure that we also, we find root cause problems. So next, let's jump into my second piece of advice. So using an established framework. This section will focus on why an established framework, a tried and true methodology can guide your team to more actionable outcomes. I've seen some teams that choose to exclusively focus on issues. So that's, hey, what really didn't work during this time? Um, on, on the other hand, I've also done with some of the sports teams I've coached the start, stop, continue method. This is actually a pretty popular methodology um, and one that I think works really well when you're quickly iterating. However, I really like to share a framework that I like to use with my teams that I think fits best with my style of leadership. 
So what I really, really love is the 4L methodology, and I'll tell you why I really like this. So the 4Ls stand for what you liked, what you learned, what lacked, and what did you long for during a sprint, a project, or development cycle. This structure fits pretty well and easily also in a FigJam board here. Again, looks pretty similar to that original template that I had first shared out. It has the boundaries, it has four sections, it's pretty predictable. Again, you have so much flexibility with how you can structure this, and this is just a very basic example. Most of the ones that I do with my teams end up like way larger than this. So the other reason I really like this methodology is I find it has a really, really awesome balance between acknowledging what worked and what didn't without things spiraling out of control in a feedback session. So an example of how this might initially look is in this example here, um, you can see how the teams kind of filled it out together and were also like tending to oftentimes like share more of the things that people liked, but all the other categories are represented. This is pretty common. Um, what I also like to advise people when they're doing this particular methodology is to offer something that works really, really well for introverts and extroverts. Oftentimes retrospectives like tend to cater towards extroverts, getting everyone together, giving lots of feedback, and then you're gonna lose the voices of the introverts potentially. So a, a piece of advice I'd also give for setting up um, within FigJam is not only making it clear that like, hey, this is a time potentially that we're gonna do this collaboratively together, and again, that's up to your team's culture, um, and also time that people can jump in after. So you might keep it open for a week as well. So then everyone has an opportunity to jump in and be able to share. But let's zoom in on the individual sections themselves and talk about why each of these is really, really important. So in the lights category, this is where you're going to acknowledge what worked well and what helped enable your team to do their best work. Um, it's also a space for acknowledgement of who contributed to helping out support team culture, drive decision making, or enabling process. I purposely like starting with this category because I think it's easier to get the ball rolling and this is again the category where people are more and more likely to share. Um, as you can see in this example here, um, there's lots of hearts, there's lots of things that people are really, really excited to share about. And in FigJam it's also really fun to use the stamps. Um, I've seen, again, some teams that have brought in stickers, um, brought in meme faces and stuff like that. Again, it's really, really Really fun and super easy to do with um, within your team's culture. In the second category of learned, this is a space where your team also acknowledges growth that happened. This promotes team members to be vulnerable about opening up about where they grew. This is so important if you value having growth mindset based team. This is something that is part of my values in leadership. Um, it elevates subject matter experts, uncovers unknown resources, um, helps people also show how they've been proactive in improving their process. This is an amazing category. And again, probably one of the easier ones that people like to share about. Um, and in this example, the team has bubbled up that they really like a workshop that we did um, about uh, FigJam and also how to use Figma. Um, these are the areas that when you start out your next design sprint or your next project, you're gonna wanna make sure to have more of this type stuff. Um, making sure that people have access to the resources that people have bubbled up here. In the third category of lacked, this is where it gets sometimes a little bit difficult, um, but it's still really, really essential to, to talk about. Um, these are often the questions um, that I get asked about this, this section versus long for. Lacked is specifically about this project that you just finished up. Um, and so this is really, really important and oftentimes becomes like a root cause analysis of why things didn't go so well. Um, and sometimes it's a little bit emotionally exhaustive, but again, this is a great place to spot trends. Um, so the team can also focus on tools, processes, resources, or other items that were missed that would have been really great to be um, available so the team could be more productive or efficient or quite frankly had a better work-life balance. In this particular example, the team has bubbled up that the team really would have loved to have more QA accounts and test devices to be able to do um, design polish. Um, and so again, this is an easy one to solve for. And in that final category, which is longed for, um, this is specifically about the next sprint or the next project that you're gonna do. So next time, what you can, can you provide for the team to make them work even better? Um, future thinking um, is really one of the things that you can consider for building upon that lacked category. But what I often encourage teams to think about is treat this as an opportunity to directly ask leadership for what you need. Personally, I know if like my team comes to me and says like, hey, we longed for this last time, let's try to make this happen. 
I love when a team is so proactive in asking for these things. And this is oftentimes too, if you do a project kickoff or start a large development cycle, this could also be your checklist to say like, are we providing the things that people asked for? And also if you're not able to provide to them, be transparent with your team too. So in this particular example, a team um, wanted to say, hey, we had focus Fridays and we oftentimes had um, cross-functional team members book over that or didn't respect that time. So next time we would be like, like a mutual understanding of boundaries related to focus time. So that's an easy ask, again, when you jump, like, jump into a project kickoff to say like, hey, did we also make it really clear to everyone what's the boundary around focus time? So bringing it all together for the 4L methodology, um, this is really about you and your team and acknowledging hard work and also hopefully being able to make change in advocation, but this activity alone isn't going to make um, outcomes change or acknowledge anything in the future that you could potentially do. Um, you have to actually make a plan around this. So the so what of this is you don't have to recreate the wheel to make it impactful. Use a framework that works for your team's culture and your team's comfort level as well. So in the next section, we'll also talk about how to make this actionable and actually make change happen. So one of the things in this category is being very clear about desired outcomes that you want to have met. Without this section, there could be so much frustration within the team. You can do all the hard work of doing a retrospective. You can launch your projects, you can launch features and different products. But ultimately, if you also don't consider how to make action, action plan happen, nothing will change. So one of the things that um, I advise for making it actionable is to look for patterns. So after your retrospective, duplicate your Fig Jam board, and then have a process for categorization. Sometimes I do this as, as a design leader. Sometimes I ask the team to help. Again, it's really up to your team's culture. And how you strategize is also, how you categorize is really also one of the things that you want to make sure that you're being very clear on. Um, you want to look for patterns. Sometimes you can treat this like a heat map. Like it's very clear in this example here, like liked was of course a, a, a popular category, but you can also see where people are adding in stamps where it's easy for people to say like, hey, this is actually something I want you to pay attention to. So if it's one of those things that like I've done the categorization, I always do like a second pass with my teams on a keep me honest pass of saying like, hey, did I interpret this information correctly? Or if the team wants to also categorize with me because of time, they're more than welcome to as well. But let's zoom in specifically on uh, this particular category. So in this one, we want to focus on the light category. So this team bubbled up that they loved better deadlines. They loved having focus Friday time. They loved their interactions with their product team. And they also really, really liked the product's um, swag. Um, this is really easy to see um, and also really to see um, not only within the representation of that category, but how it relates to all the other ones as well. So my suggestion for how to categorize, this is again like a personal thing for your team, is to look for related topics, similar root causes, common sediments, and also what's that relationship to team culture and norms. So in this case, it's easy to see that like focus time and better uh, time, uh, better deadlines are related to time management. So this is one of the things we want to be able to focus on for like in this category, this is where we want to protect time management and better focus is one of those things we want to put more weight into. So in the next category of creating an action plan. So Ultimately, you want to choose a tracking method and tool. Some folks really like to use external tracking tools, and there's a variety that people can use. Um, I ultimately really, really like keeping it in FigJam, though, to, from the get-go. Um, and this is one of those things that, like, creating that action plan, you want to make it achievable. So in this particular example that you can see here today, um, the team has decided to bubble up one topic from each of the categories that they want to focus on. Um, I've seen this with many, many different teams where they choose to say, we're going to do everything that everyone shared and there's no prioritization. And what happens with that is that most folks, this is not their full-time job. And so there's a lot of um, struggle with like, hey, we want to make change, but it ultimately doesn't happen. So making sure you can make it achievable by saying like, hey, this time we're going to focus on two things or three things. Um, and the other piece of advice I would give too is if you find that there's way too many things on here, 
you're not doing retros often enough, most likely. You're going to want to make sure that you're having that connected time with your team. And that could even look like something like, you know, every six months you do a retrospective, but you do a monthly check-in on that to see how progress is going. Or this might be something that you um, attribute to your annual goals. Um, but again, if you find yourself with so many items, this is one of the things that's going to become super, super well overwhelming for the team. So in this example, you want to be able to make it so it's really clear who is accountable, timelines and expectations, and how success is going to be determined. So let's take a little bit of a closer look at this, how to create an action plan. In this specific example, we decided to lean into the lacked category. So what are we going to remedy for our next sprint? So let's break it down into those achievable steps. So in this category, we decided to say like test accounts and phones. That's the thing that we're going to want to be able to provide next time. So the action plan is ultimately that we have to secure budget. We most likely have to get these accounts and we have to work with our QA partners. Um, the thing that we can do from a planning standpoint too is that we're going to say, hey, at this specific date or these specific expectations of time, we're going to have a QA party or a bug bash with also our partners and be able to use these test devices and also these test accounts. So it makes it really clear like who is going to participate? What is that going to look like? Do we also need to coordinate with other teams? And ultimately, the other thing that we also want to share too is about how to make it accountable too. So you want to provide a person that's going to be either the direct point of contact, the person that wants to see this through, or the person that could say ultimately too, like, and this is one of the most empowering things about doing retrospectives. A person can own this as an action item and say, I saw this through and also impacted positive team change or um, empower the team to do better within their work. And so that's a wonderful thing to put on your annual goals or in a way of showing that you've had growth in your team. Great opportunity for folks that are also not in managerial roles to take more of a leadership action and, and show proactiveness in this too. So I love seeing this category of making it super easy for people to say like, hey, how are we gonna change things? And again, it doesn't have to be overly complicated. It doesn't have to be brought into a complicated tool. You can create that easily in FigJam. Um, and so one of the other things that I also really like about this is it's a stamp in time. So when you say, hey, these are the things that we're going to try to accomplish, it also shows potentially in the future when you want to revisit these things, what does that look like for new leadership team, folks that haven't been on the team that often. This is a great way of also onboarding people to your team to say, this is the way we give feedback or this is the way that we also like to grow as a team. Um, I've seen this in, in my own example within leadership where we've had new leaders, senior leaders come in and say like, hey, I wanna get to know the team better. And it's so, so easy to send a link off to them and say like, hey, this is our last retrospective. This is the type of stuff that we said was important that we wanted to change, or that this is something that we want to be able to provide for our teams. And here's how we did that. And I love this because it's also one of those things that like, if folks also choose to leave an organization or take on a new role, their voice is not lost. It is maintained and is one of those things that is so empowering for folks and want, and it's an encouragement for people to want to participate too. So this is one of the things I absolutely love about creating like an easy action plan. And then in the last thing that I want to share about making it actionable is similar to what I just shared is like that individual voice. Authentic, the authenticity in your feedback is so, so key. So nothing is more important, empowering than providing solutions to real problems for a team. So in this particular example, I decided to highlight an area um, with all the post-its that received the most stamps. Um, this is also one of the things that when I like to share the feedback with the leadership team or across the board um, with other folks in the organization, like this is a great way to start that process of sharing feedback because it's easy to see those polarizing things. This is a pretty generic example. Most stars, most thumbs up. Like there's definitely sometimes a mix of all these. I've, I've loved in some of my previous teams where people are really, really passionate about a certain topic. Sometimes they'll almost cover the sticky in itself. Um, and I'm so thankful that also in Fig Jam there's like this process where you can also just attach the stamps to the post-it notes so they stay with them so you don't have to worry about selecting a million different things. So thank you for providing that. Um, but again, this is a fun way to kick it off. And I also really, really like this because it shows the team like, hey, what polarized and what was popular too. It's not to say that some of those sticky notes that don't have, you know, are maybe a one-off or didn't have that many stamps were not as valid. Those are so, so valid, but sometimes it's also really important to see like what polarized the most as well. Um, so the so what of this is you have to be intentional about making it actionable. This is the magic of doing retros, inspiring change and seeing it through. 
So in summary, you really want to think about these three things, just three simple things, which is starting early. The goal is to be open, honest, and exclusive as possible. Use a framework. Again, you don't have to recreate the wheel to make it impactful. And to make it actionable, you need to be intentional. And if nothing else today, you can start uh, by yourself or as a team. Your team might not be ready to jump into something like this, but this is absolutely something that you can do today and show how proactiveness and then introduce it into your team too. So it doesn't matter if you're like, okay, my team's not gonna be ready for this. We don't have the time for it. You can start. So I also um, wanna thank uh, some folks for this, really inspiring this talk. So I wanna thank my Digital Wallet uh, 2.0 team and my Vendo design team. Thank you so much for displaying vulnerability and inspiration to create this session. Um, I also wanna give some shout outs in, to my resources. Um, to Miggy, thank you for creating an amazing <laughs> grid file for me to use on this. Um, Pablo from blush.design um, blush for the illustrations. That's an amazing plugin, by the way. If you haven't had a chance to play with that yet in Figma, so, so fun. Um, I also use Blair Adams noun project icons and then also the form L methodology from teamretros.com. So thank you. And if you want to continue the conversation, you can follow me on Twitter at HelloMeganW. Um, and I hope to conver like have conversation with some of you guys. And again, thanks for joining me here at Config 2022. Bye.